Prima di dare la parola all'onorevole Keller, voglio ricordare che se i presidenti dei gruppi parlano oltre il tempo loro assegnato, tolgono il tempo poi ai parlamentari del loro gruppo. La parola all'onorevole Sca Keller a nome del gruppo dei Verdi. Thank you and uh, thank you Prime Minister for joining this debate on the future of Europe. And indeed there is much to talk about on the future of Europe and much is at stake because the very existence about this of this amazing project here on this continent is being put into question. And we need to find new strengths for our European project. And actually I think a look back will be helpful in that. A look back will be helpful in looking forward. And for me, one of the key things about the Greek crisis was that one of the fundamental promises of the European Union was put into doubt. And that was the promise of the European Union bringing prosperity, bringing well-being to its citizens. And that promise was broken. Europe was all of a sudden bringing poverty. And of course, we can argue a lot, and it's all right, that there was a reason for why there was a crisis, which was not in Europe. And of course, you can say it was obviously national finance ministers who were doing the main part of the job, so not really Brussels. That's all true. But it doesn't solve the problem of Europe was not able to find a common solution of solidity and solidarity. But prosperity and well-being, that is one of the fundamental policy goals. That's why we do policies, right, for our citizens, to bring them for a better life. And so far we had a lot of nice promises also here in Europe about how nice it would be to have a social Europe, to have more social policies, but we don't have them yet. I think one of the key lessons from Greece needs to be that we finally create that social Europe that we get binding social targets, which are on the same level as the economic rules that we already have. We don't need more empty declarations. We need access to proper housing and to medical care for all Europeans. We need an unemployment support scheme to protect, protect citizens from economic crisis and also to allow member states to face asymmetric shocks and to recover more quickly. And we need a framework directive on minimum income schemes so that we have a safety net everywhere ensuring um, well-being in the European Union. And first and foremost, we also need to address the big problem of youth unemployment, which is becoming even more than an economic problem. Because if you have a whole generation without a perspective, then this is also a problem of democracy. And, and here would agree, since 2008, we still haven't come to terms about how to prevent any future financial crisis. We have member states who are blocking uh, the banking union parts like the deposit guarantee scheme. Any proposals for mechanisms to absorb asymmetric economic shocks have been spineless so far. And uh, also our economic policies are being held hostage by national politics. and We're not getting where we need to be. But crisis can happen at any moment and we need to be prepared and we need to be resilient. And we should really abandon the dogma of fiscal consolidation for its own sake and rather focus on sustainable investments that soften the effects of economic shocks and prevent their escalation and proliferation. And we also need a support mechanism for member states in an economic hardship that corresponds to European principles and European rules. And this is not only an act of solidarity, you know, it's not just a nice handout. I think it's a very vital piece for the survival of our union. And to have a sustainable economy that provides good jobs, we also need to finally start the social ecological transformation of our economy. And there we have some good examples in Greece. Local initiatives such as on the island of Tinos, on recycling, the energy social enterprise of Gardiza, very important trailblazers for the future economy. It's very good to have the local initiatives, but we also need to have a European plan for the social ecological transition. Already now, more than one million jobs exist in the renewable sector. So leading the way in terms of climate will also pay off in terms of jobs. And joint European action is also needed with regards to refugee protection. Greece was the main point of arrival uh, for Syrians, Iraqis, Afghanis fleeing from war and from persecution. Later on, it was Italy at some point, it was Spain, it was Malta, and who knows, maybe it's going to be Poland tomorrow, we don't know. But we can no longer leave a single member state or even an island alone to do the job that we all together have to do. The European Parliament has put forward a good proposal, I believe, and I really hope, Prime Minister, that your colleagues in the Council will finally make a move um, on that. 
It was the fishermen from Lesbos. It was the grandmothers in Idomeni. And it was the many helpers all over Greece who saved so many lives, but they also saved humanity itself, and they saved the face of all of us in Europe. And I wonder, what are we giving back in return? <laughs> and those courageous people who saved life, who are saving lives, they should not be criminalized, as we see that in some member states. Greece has been hit hard by climate change. Many of the previous speakers have mentioned the forest fires, which were really, really severe. And of course, it was not just Greece. We also had forest fires up in Sweden, even. Europe finally needs to get its act together to combat climate change. This is really a vital question for our planet and our continent. And Greece has much to offer in regards to a solution. It has plenty of sun, plenty of wind. Oil drilling, though, is a thing of the past. It poses serious risks to the environment and it harms the climate that we all depend on. I really hope that Greece will abandon oil drilling plants and that it will be a front runner in renewables and lead the path as it can be. And islands like Tilos show the way. And I really hope that there will be more examples like this. And lastly, Prime Minister, I really want to congratulate on your truly historic achievement you have found a solution to a conflict where all the predecessors have failed. And the agreement on North Macedonia is an example for Europe. It's an example for how to solve conflicts without violence, without big struggle, peacefully solving conflicts, trying to live in harmony with your neighbors. That's really an example for Europe. Thank you for that. Per il gruppo confederale della sinistra unitaria europea, sinistra verde nordica, la parola all'onorevole Zimmer.